for tell me that it started with that. Okay, good. It's recording. All right. So what we're going to do then is, uh, and I will have to take one brief break there just to get my son out the door. He has something else to get to uh, in a couple of minutes. But for now, let's go ahead and uh, so where I'm working from here is chapter seven. We're going back to chapter seven since we didn't get to finish this up. Is I want to show how to monitor processes. So what we're going to do is we're going to start a process that just continually does stuff. Okay, so we're going to uh, we're going to uh, echo a word to an output file while true. So this is just an, in, an, an infinite loop. Echo new line rock We're going to append that into this thing called out file. And we're going to sleep for a second. Uh, hold on a second. Okay, so and then that's done. So this is all we're going to do in this window. Okay. So it's just going to over and over again, infinite loop, echo the word rock into this output file that's, you know, just being saved to our, to our system. OK, so now let's take a look at what's going on in that output file. Tail dash F. Uh, oh, man. I messed up for you. Hmm. I'm not sure what that did. I forgot to make this a path. Oh, I'm not sure. Okay, so let's try this again. Okay, so now this is working this time. So let's try this again. So here, look. So no, notice rock, 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 rock. Okay. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to Control Z, we're going to come back over here and we're going to control Z, we're going to suspend this process. Okay, so notice that notice that it's every one second the word rock going on over here. Over here, we're going to control Z to stop the process. Notice it's no longer writing that to the file over here, is it? Okay, so it's done. But it's not killed, it's just suspended. It's background and suspended. So if we look at what jobs there are, okay. Uh, yeah, this one's a problem, isn't it? I don't even know what that one's doing. All right, well, we're seeing that this one, this process is stopped. Okay. So, EG is going to do what? Notice it's running again, but I have access over here to do whatever I want. I still have access, right? And the reason why I can't see. Oh, that's right. Okay, I couldn't see. Okay. And the reason why is that it's running, but in the background. So now I have access to do stuff on this window while this one is still running over here in the background. While this, and actually this is not what's running. This, this is what's running, okay? But notice it's got this fun little ampersand in front of it now. I mean, sorry, ampersand behind it now. And the reason why is because now it's been a moved as a background process. Okay, all right. Is a way that we can see. All right, so let's um, let's start another one. Okay, a similar one, but instead of echoing rock, we're going to echo uh, 
going to put the ampersand in it this time to make it a background process. Now notice, look, rock, paper, rock, paper, rock, paper, rock, paper, rock, paper. And as you might have guessed, or if you looked at this in advance, scissors. Okay, and what is scissors going to do? Okay, uh, what's going to happen? I'm going to run this as a background process. Now rock, paper, scissors. Rock, scissors, paper, rock, scissors, paper. Okay. And it's all about when we hit enter, which one gets done first. Okay. Uh, hold on just a second. So well, let's see, where were we? Uh, so this is a way that we can see some of how these processes are running in the background, but we still have access to the terminal, right? So this process is running but all three of these processes are running. So if we were to come over here and look at the jobs again, okay. Notice all of these are running. They're just running in the background is all. Okay. All right. Now, if we wanted to move one to the foreground, let's say the rock process, okay. Yeah, uh, hold on just a second. Okay, so here we have these the jobs that are running. One, two, three, four. One, I, I would like to get rid of because I didn't realize that. I don't know what that's what I'm doing. Okay. So what we can do is we can bring one to the foreground. So foreground percent. Uh, percent. What number do we want to bring the foreground? Let's uh, bring the rock process to the foreground. So this would be uh, not that one. This one, number two. So let's bring the foreground process of the rock process to the foreground. So now rock process is, is here in the foreground. It's running, but it's running in the foreground. Okay. So now if we hit control Z now, notice what happens. Rock is no longer in there, right? Rock is no longer going showing up in there. And the reason why is because now it's in the background. It is also suspended. So if we see what's going on with jobs, right? Here, the rock process is now stopped. Okay, it's been suspended. Okay, now let's let's get rid of the paper process. Okay, let's let's do let's see what was our jobs. It's paper is number three. So if we bring the paper process to the foreground, number three. Paper is now in the foreground. If we do control C, not Z, not Z, but C, right? J. Control that. Okay. Now, only scissors is up there. So let's confirm something. Jobs. Notice, look, the paper process isn't even there anymore. Control C not only stops the process, it kills it. It gets rid of it. Okay. All right. We can see what else is going on. 
what all processes there are. Right? Sometimes there's a lot of processes going on. Right? Uh, this might be better seen if we expand this out. Oh, not that way. Uh, let's see. Let me do it like that. There we go. That's much better. Okay. So notice we see in the other window here, there's this tail command that we did. Right. There's a bunch of other things that are going on as well. Right. So this is some information about the process IDs of what's going on. Right. The bash shell. There's a sleep command going on. We know why that's there. Right. So if we bring to the foreground, let's see, let's go back to jobs. Okay. If we bring to the foreground a stopped process, okay, uh, let's stop the, first let's stop, um, let's, let's bring to the foreground, uh, the scissors process. So now that's in the foreground. And if we control C that, okay. Now what's going to happen? If we look back at what's going on here, nothing's going on over here, right? And the reason why, the reason why nothing is going on over here is that this process is stopped. The only remaining process that we had left out there is now stopped. So if we bring the for if we bring to the foreground process number two, it's, it starts up again. And the reason why is we not we brought it to the foreground, we not only bring it to the foreground, we also restart it at the same time. So if we control C that, now it's done. Uh, let me go ahead and foreground one while I'm at it and control C. Okay, so now if I look at jobs now, I shouldn't see anything, right? I've now killed everything. I've killed all of my processes, okay? okay. So if I come over here and I wanna stop this tail command over here in this window, control, let's do control C to kill it. All right, let's do control Z to stop it. Notice that now it's stopped. Jobs here. There is still this one here. Okay. So I can foreground that. I can control C to kill it. And now it has no jobs there anymore either. Okay. So that completes that practice. <coughs> so let's talk about terminating processes in other ways. Okay. Let's go back and we're going to do the same idea, but instead of rock, paper, scissors, they want us to instead of rock, paper, scissors, they, they want us to do this uh, game set match idea. Okay, so it's kind of the same idea, but instead of Instead of paper, rock, paper, scissors, it's game, set, and match. Uh, old tennis term, right? Game, set, and match. Okay. So now if we do the kind of the same idea over here, we're going to tail this out file. So now as we still have all this scissors, rock, paper, all this stuff like in here, but now it's like game, set, match, game, set, match, right? Okay. So now, if we uh, view the jobs, excuse me, in the left window, we view jobs over here, we should see all three of our jobs that are running. 
game, set, match. Okay. So now we want to stop the game process. So let's do kill, stop the game process. So percent one. Okay. So now it's stopped. Now notice game is no longer there. If we look at jobs again, what do we see? That game process, right? It stopped. So let's politely ask which one? Let's politely ask the set process to also be terminated. Okay. So here, instead of so kill, but instead of sig stop, now we're going to sig terminate. Okay. And we're going to do that with the set process, number two. Notice here, now match is the only thing being output to our file over here. And if we look at our jobs again, now not only is it stopped, the set process, but it's gone. It's not run, it's, it's, we terminated it. It's killed. Okay. So now let's send the signal that we need to send to restart the game process. Okay, because we can't restart. Well, let's go ahead and see what happens with this. Okay, so we're going to kill. We're going to use the kill command. I know that's confusing, but we're going to continue. Send the signal for continue to the game process number one. Now notice matching game, they're back. And if we look at jobs, both of them are running. Now here's my question. What happens if I try to do this with process number two? I want to try to send the sig continue to process number two, that old set process. Nope, can't do it. No such process exists. Okay. Now, I want to do one more thing. I want to kill everybody. I want to kill all the processes. One, gone. Three, gone. Jobs, none. All right. But now I can use that p kill command also to get rid of other things that are not in my uh, uh, not in this window. Right? So do that. Now look what happened. I did a p kill command to kill other commands that are running on other windows. Right for anything that involves tail, I want to kill the tail commands. That was this guy over here, right? So it terminated my tail command. So I was able to terminate this thing that was running over here. So if I look at jobs, nothing's there, All right? Now, let me do this again. Let me, but let me not do the signal terminate. Let me, let me do this, okay? So this is still going. Let me do p kill. Instead of terminating the tail, I want to turn, I want to stop it. So now, what just happened? I stopped the tail command. This over here, if I see what jobs there are, it's still there, but now it's stopped. So what could I do? How could I restart this? I could restart this in the background, right? I could do background percent one. Now it's running again, but in the background. Now what would happen if I sig termed the tail command? Now what happens over here? Jobs, it's terminated. All right? But it's in a status of terminated. In the, when it was terminated while it was running in the foreground, it told me, where is it? Uh, it's up there somewhere. You remember, you, I, I, some of you saw it. Go watch the video, you'll see it for sure. There was, at the end of this, it said terminated. It told me it was terminated, right? Now it's gone, right? It just took a few moments. 
Remember, this is part of that whole, what we talked about being a zombie process. When I saw this immediately, this process was a zombie process. It still wasn't completely gone yet. I could still see it. Now, now that it's been cleaned up and everything's gone and everything's cleaned up and finished, now it's a gone process. Okay. All right. So that, uh, let's see. Do I want to do this last practice, the monitoring process activity? Uh, no, I don't think I'm going to do this one. I don't think I'm going to do the monitoring process activity one because it requires uh, a bunch of stuff to be running at the time. So I may set that up for you guys and let you do that practice, but uh, we won't do that one today. I do want to do chapter eight, the, the practices in chapter eight. Okay. Because I do want you to see how that runs. Okay, so what we'll do is we will kill this. We'll get rid of. Hmm. You guys remember. Oh, no, can't do that. Uh, let's see. It's. to there it is I want to peak web peak web dash no oh okay so w dash f tells me that this so I want to get rid of this here. I want to get rid of this T T T U I two, right? Yeah. Right, yeah. I want to get rid of this uh Yeah, T T two T Y two. So let's see, how can I do that? I want to kill. I want to P kill T T two Y two. So I can do that from here. So it should work. Let's see. Dash T T T Y two. Oh, that wasn't what I was expecting. What just happened? Any ideas? Actually, I think I know what just happened. So what happened was, I killed. <laughs> I killed the bash shell that I was currently operating in. And this is the login to this system. And so uh, what happened was it, it logged me out. I logged myself out of this uh, the bash shell that I was in the process of using right then and there. All right. So that was not a good idea, was it? That was not something I should have done. All right, that was a mistake on my part. I was I was thinking of the other shell. I was trying to close out the other bash, the other uh, terminal. But uh, okay, that was a mistake on my. Part. All right. So back to what I was trying to do now is I want to get into chapter eight. So I want us to list all the service units that are on the system. So let's let's do that. Let's do sudo. So we won't be able to do this. So if I try to do this with my, just my user, system. 
full list type equals service. Oh, I guess I can do this. I, I thought I needed to do this as a as an administrator. So I can see what all the different services are. Some quick information about them. You know, system D. Uh, SSHD is the one we'll we'll, we'll talk about a lot here because where that's coming up in the next chapter. Right? It's <coughs> loaded and active and running. Okay. All right, so we can list units that are type socket, all of them. Okay, so there's some of those as well. Okay. All right, we can look at the status of a particular service. status of so in the example here they give us the cronid service okay so here so we see that the cronid service is loaded and enabled it's active it's running most likely right so this service i can go ahead and tell you this service started at the local boot time and it's been running the whole time. Okay. So let's see what else we want to do. What else? What kind of other information do we want to do? Okay. So we're going to look at some da daemons that are running or not. Oh, wait. Uh, let's see. Uh, what is it? PID, uh, PID uh, 868. Okay. Yep. Okay. Well, let's see about the SSH. Okay. The SSHD is also enabled. It's also active. It's running. All right, so let's see. Let's use this uh, uh, is enabled. So we already know, we looked at it, but let's say we don't want to have to look at all this information just to find out one thing, just find out one little thing that we're trying to find out. System control is enabled, SSHD is enabled. What about is it active? Yep, it's active. Okay. We already looked at the status here. All right. It was loaded, it was active, it was enabled. We already so we see a bunch of other information in addition. All right? We see some other information. But here is just if we want to know is it enabled, is it active? Okay. So let's say we want to see of uh, all service units, we want to see. What is the active and active, some of those status things? System control list unit files type. Okay, so we can see the enabled and disabled status of all these different services. And you may have noticed that I've been doing this control Z for a lot of, for these things that we've been working with. Notice that they connecting back to what we talked about before. If I look at the jobs, I'm seeing all these things that are stopped now, right? So what would happen if I brought to the foreground, say this this number four process, okay? Foreground percent four. This here, it just brings that stuff to the foreground, shows me what it's doing and because this process this system control to list it's an active process so if i do control c now instead of z 
it ends it, right? So now here it's gone. All right. And coming connecting back to how to deal with some of these things. What if I wanted to kill sig process file? All right. So now it's terminated. If I look at the jobs, it's no longer there. Okay. Uh, uh, was it dash F? That's all I meant to do. Uh, P kill. Ah, I'm forgetting which what it was that we had to do. Is it kill all? I'm thinking of killing all. No, it was dash. Not T. Dash P. Uh, let's see. Um, let's see. Matching process. I don't want to do full. Process name. Man. I can't, I can't, I don't, I, it's not, it's not coming to me. All right. So let's continue on. Let's finish up with uh, chapter eight practice. So in addition to being able to view those processes, to view those services, we want to be able to control them. Okay, so again, let's go back to status of SSHD. It's active, it's enabled. All right. Okay. So now let's restart the SSHD service and see what happens. Notice one thing I want you to note the process ID 991. Okay. Uh, okay, so we've restarted that process. Now, if I look at the status, what happened? The process ID changed. Right, it's no longer 991. Now it's something else. Okay. Now, if I were to instead of restart it, let's say the the whole point of why I restarted it was that I wanted to uh, load a new configuration file. Well, I could have done that without having to restart the process. I could have just done a reload. Right. Oh, and it needs my. I guess I could have done this with sudo. All right. I guess it does require us to, I guess that makes sense. Restarting and reloading processes and services does require administrator privileges. So now if we look at the status, this here, the process ID, the main process ID didn't change, right? It stayed the same. Why? Because reloading just said, use the new configuration file. Don't stop and restart the process. Okay. So let's. So that's how we. That's how we're dealing with the configuration file. That's starting and restarting. Sorry, starting the SSHD, reloading the configuration file. All right. Let's talk about. Uh, let's use a different example. Now, as far as. As far as. It's loaded, it's enabled, it's active, it's the same thing, right? 
it's a different process. It does different things, different service. Um, but its current enabled and active status is the same okay, as the SSHD. All right. And you'll see that a lot. A lot of process, a lot of services are going to be enabled, are going to be enabled and active. Enabled and running. So let's stop the cronid service. Okay, now I'm going to do sudo this time. Oh, ah, let me just switch user. Okay, so now I'm root. I, I just do it this way. All right, so It's enabled and it's active. So now I want to I want to stop the Cronid service. Okay. As root, I can do that, so I don't have to. Okay. So now if I look at the status of the Cronid service, it is here. It's still loaded. It's still enabled, but now it's inactive. It's not work. It's not running right now because I stopped it. Okay, so if I look for, is it enabled? Yes, it's enabled. All right. Nothing changed <clears throat> about that. Okay. Now, if I were to reboot the system now, which I won't do because that takes more time than I'm wanting to give to it right now, but if I were to reboot this system right now, the Cronid service would be running again. And the reason why is because it's still enabled. When it reboots, enabled means start it up at boot time. So if I were to boot this, it would be running again. So let me go ahead and simulate that now. Instead of stopping it, let me start it. Okay. So now it's running again. Okay. Now, if I were to disable it, so if I were to disable the Cronid service, all right, and if I were to look at its status. All right, what would happen? It's disabled. So now, even though it's running, if I were to restart the system now, it would be no longer running. Because disabled would say, when this system starts up, this service shouldn't be running. Okay. So what I'll do is I'll simulate that now. If we were to the system, if we were to restart the system and then look at the status of the Cronid service, we would see this. Disabled and inactive. Okay. Let's not leave our system in this bad way. Let's go ahead and enable the Cronid service again. And let's go ahead and start it as well because that's the way the system should be. And let's verify that it is enabled and active. And notice that it's been active since when? Since Friday at 4 a.m. Well, that's Eastern Standard Time. That's eight hours ago. That's, a, that, that's um, New York time, time zone where it's four, eight hours behind us. So what this is saying is, so notice that I said normally, if you see enabled and active, what that normally means is 
this service started at the start time and has been running ever since. That's normally what's going on. Okay. In this particular situation, we have an enabled service that is currently running, but that's not what happened, right? What happened was we stopped it, we disabled it, we re-enabled it, we started it again, right? So there are different ways to get to the same final outcome. I do want to do one thing that I just thought of. I'm going to stop the current service again. We're going to make sure that it's stopped. Yep, stop. Now, what do you think will happen if we restart the Cronid service? So what we did before was we restarted a running service. We restarted a running service, it stopped it, it started again. Now we, I'm saying I want to restart a stop service. What do you think is going to happen? Well, let's see. Let's hit enter and see what happens. Well, I didn't get any kind of error message or anything. If we look at the status, yep, it's running. Okay. One more. Let's see what happens when we reload a stopped service. Oh, failed to reload. All right, we cannot reload a stopped service. That makes sense that it would tell us we can't do that because reloading is all about starting it, is uh, all about using a new configuration file or the current, I should say maybe not necessarily new, but reloading the current configuration file into a running service without having to stop and start it again. So basically it's saying you can't reload into this because when you start this process up, it's going to reload it on its own. It's going to use a new configuration file anyway. Okay, so we cannot reload a stopped service. We can restart a stopped service. And we can start a stopped service. Um, let's see, I want to say status of current ID says 61. Right? So I also wanted to use that as a, a you know, Exclamation point 61 to reuse the a recently used command. Okay. Without having to type it all out. All right. So we're pretty clear, I think, on how to view and control uh, these uh, system services and daemons. All right. So I'm hoping. Uh, you guys know how to uh, to do that. Again, there definitely will be questions related to this on the uh, exam. Let me go ahead and uh, say I, I, I have plans that by the end of the day, I will have uploaded a previous version of an exam for you guys to, to view if I haven't done it already. I, I think I forgot to do that last week and I apologize for that. Uh, so I will try to go ahead and make sure to do that by the end of the day today, okay? If there aren't any questions, we can go ahead and end there for today. And, uh, and I can say that we will see you guys next week. At this point, my understanding is that this course, the exam will be that first week of December. And so we will plan to, uh, to have the exam then. And so we'll plan to have a regular class next week. Okay. Because I think in the syllabus, I have the tentative midterm exam date for, for next week, but that's not going to happen. So we'll have a regular class next week. Okay. Are there any questions of the two of you that stuck around this long? No. Okay, well, have a good weekend, and let's try to stay healthy, and I guess try to um, do all the social, social distancing stuff that they're asking.
you. All right. Have a good. Oh, is there a question? Nope. Okay. All right. Have a good weekend, and I'll see you guys in a week.